It's been about 45 minutes. Concrete's ready to go. We're magging it, edging it, it's getting it going. Not quite ready to broom yet, but not gonna be long over there in the sun. Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in. In today's video, we're gonna talk about finishing concrete. And in particular today, we're finishing around a pool deck, but a lot of the same principles go with finishing patios, with finishing garage floors, house floors. You know, a lot of the handwork is, and the timing is the same. So the, the key, you know, one of the big keys to finishing obviously is experience and knowing when to start finishing. What are the types of conditions you're finishing in? What, what's the weather like? Is the sun out? Is it cold? Is it really hot? Is it humid? A lot of different factors go into finishing concrete. What type of concrete are you are you pouring? You know, what's the mix? Is it a 2,500 PSI? Is it a 4,000 PSI? So all these little things go into it. You know, is it windy? What's the what's the sub base like you're pouring on? Is it is it poly? Is it styrofoam? Is it gravel? Is it damp? So. Today we're pouring, as you can see, we got this pool deck poured. This is actually part two. If you want to see part one where we form this up and we pour it, there'll be a link for that at the end of the video, also down in the description. But today it's really about timing. When you got a, something like this, you're going around and you got a limited amount of time to get a what we call a broom finish on this. It's really about timing, having enough guys to get on the concrete and what we do here in Maine is we'll just mag float it out. Sometimes we'll have to mag float it twice, depending on just how the concrete feels, how it looks after we run the broom across it. If we want it, the broom finish a little bit finer, you know, what type of finish we want. Going around a pool where it gets really wet, you know, we don't want like a super fine broom finish, but we don't want a really coarse one either because there'll be adults and children running around this with bare feet. So we'll kind of shoot for like a, what we call like a medium to light broom finish. And that means the timing's got to be really good, especially when you're out in the sun like this and it's, you know, the conditions are dry, the conditions are hot. You got about a thousand square feet, you're going around and you want to make sure everything looks really good. So you got it, we're edging the outside of the form with an edger. The inside, we have our, we have our, concrete coping forms on from Z pool forms so when we mag around that you know we like to make sure we're matched really good because we got to strip those off afterwards and it's got a really nice rock face coping on it when we strip that off so it's important that we go around that and that looks really good and matched um, you'll see at some points the guys scraping some concrete out off the top of it where it looks like it might be just a little bit high from pouring and that helps, that helps strip the forms off a little bit easier too, but it just makes it look nice at the end of the day. And then, you know, getting on it with our skids, getting it magged to the right smoothness, and then pulling that broom across it is key to getting a really nice looking broom finish, keeping the broom clean. I mean, after a couple pulls, those bristles, they kind of fill up with concrete paste. And if you just keep going without cleaning it, then it, it just leaves what we call some concrete balls on the surface and they'll just progressively keep getting worse and worse and that doesn't look good to me and I know guys say you can kick them off the next day or whatever but you know first I think first impressions mean a lot to the homeowner so when they walk up to this pool and they see a nice clean and tight broom finish that's going to give it the wow factor versus if they walk up to it and you got all these little concrete balls everywhere and you tell them yeah, we'll just scrape those off the next day. Those won't those won't stay on there. Just how I feel. So we take time and we'll clean the broom in between, you know, every few broom paths. And I think it just just makes for a better look at the end of the day. Now we got we're going around this thing both ways. Uh, we did pump this. So, you know, right now, right now the guys are just about finishing up where the first truck stopped as far as magging goes and they're going to be moving on to the second truck and then me and Harvey are running the brooms some of that was 12 feet wide some of this is six to eight feet wide and then Eric he's kind of running the edger staying trying to stay ahead of the guys magging 
We don't like edging when the concrete's like super wet either. I, it just kind of, I don't know, it kind of defeats the purpose. I like magging. I mean, I like edging the concrete when it has just a little bit of firmness to it. That way it holds its edge a lot better. It's kind of like having to go around it one less time. As long as you time it right, as long as you got enough guys. In this corner I'm showing you, I'm kind of fighting those rocks, pulling that broom back. I actually had to climb up on them. Because of the, the width of the pool deck there, I needed such, you know, I needed about 12 feet in length of handle. And when I run the broom, I like keeping the broom at a certain, like, slope, a certain angle. When I pull it backwards, I don't like changing the angle too much. So it just makes for a, a more consistent broom look when you have the same angle and the same. You pull it back pretty much at the same speed without stopping and starting. So fighting them rocks was a little bit of a challenge, but it wasn't too bad. You can see Darren there. He's kind of... He's going around the what we call the skimmer right now. We like matching that skimmer, making sure everything looks nice and clean and neat around the skimmer. And then when we broom it, you know, we broom nice and tight to it. We don't broom right over the top of it. Sometimes we'll even tape tape over the top. Sometimes we'll take the top right off and go around it that way. Luke again right there, he's scraping the coping forms, making sure they everything matches up really good. Even if it's just an eighth of an inch, we like to make sure it matches. Now, if you're wondering where the joints are, we decided to cut joints in this instead of hand tooling them. But sometimes we'll hand tool them. Depends on the deck. Depends on, you know, how fast the concrete's setting, what type of day it is. This one we decide just to saw. So what we'll do is, after we get done brooming, we'll give it three or four hours to cure up, and then it's ready to saw. So we'll saw cut joints. The good thing about saw cutting is what we found is the difference between sawing and hand tooling, number one, is the, the width of the joint. The saw joint is much narrower, so it leaves for a really fine, narrow-looking joint. Plus, when you saw cut, you're actually cutting down through the rock, which, which we found makes it more apt to crack in the joint. When it does shrink, it tends to crack in the joint much more than just hand tool joints. When you hand tool joints, you know, when you're using a hand groover, the groover just kind of pushes the rocks out of the way to make the joint. So it's pushing them down a little bit, side to side a little bit. And depending on how deep that joint is, it should be a quarter of the, the depth should be at least a quarter of the depth of the thickness. So if you've got a four inch thick concrete patio like this one is, your groover, your hand tool joint should go down at least an inch. That's another thing with our saw cut, it goes in at least an inch and a quarter. So it's a little bit over the desired thickness, but it does make for uh, almost, you know, almost nothing's guaranteed with concrete and cracking, but it almost guarantees it's going to crack in the saw joint. Versus hand joints, you know, a lot of the hand groovers, the joint, the right, joint part of it is like three quarters of an inch deep. So you're not quite getting that 25% cut. But again, we still do it, and you can buy ones that are deeper. We have both. We have we have missile groovers that are you know inch and a half deep. We can run through there first, and then run the run the hand groover through that afterwards to clean it up. Those work really good. But today we're just magging, brooming, and then we'll wait, and then saw cut, and you'll. The so the pool is fairly new this year. And they haven't really, they haven't really had, you know, much use out of it yet. They kind of wanted to get the concrete in, get everything backfilled, get everything landscaped. So after we get this done, they'll be able to start finishing up that stuff. Boy, a lot of rocks there. Huh? Look at the rocks in the background. Holy cow. This place was right full of rock and ledge when they dug it all out. Got a pretty good view, though, of the mountains. This is... We're right up in the mountains of Maine. This isn't over an hour, over an hour from our shop, kind of northwest, northwest of Augusta, Maine. It's actually at a big ski resort. I tell you what did make this easy today is having five of us here that are all really experienced finishers that all knew what we're doing. So any of us could have changed places with the other one, and. You know, you never would have even noticed. He 
Maybe Darren's using some of the concrete he scraped away to fill in maybe an area he feels like is a little bit low. And that could have been from the bow float. Sometimes when you push and pull that bow float up against the coping, it might need, it might leave like a little divot and need to be filled in. Here I am edging the concrete. I might I probably could have got on this a little bit earlier, but it's it's not too bad. It's kind of fighting the form a little bit. I'm using a steel edger here from DeWalt. Again, with my DeWalt gloves too. That makes a pretty good combination, but you can see when I edge this, it holds its shape really good. If you edge this when it's really soft and wet, the part right up next to the board just kind of falls back in and you know, you gotta come right back over it and do it again. So now I'll edge that once, we'll mag this out, we'll broom it, and then we'll come back for the finish edger and that's it, we'll just have to hit it twice like that. If you, if you time that just right, it works out pretty good. The concrete's probably actually a little bit softer than what it looks on video right here too. It does, I mean it looks pretty firm right there, but it's, I could press my fingers into that at least a half an inch still right now. Kind of managing your way around all the obstacles is half the battle when you're finishing concrete. Luckily this pool is all the way from the house. A lot of pools we do are almost like right up next to the house. so. We're kind of battling working up against the house. This one was being this far away from the house made it really easy to pull the broom. See, I was just going back and forth over that a few times. It fills everything in really nice. No more rock holes. This was 4,000 PSI. I believe it was a 3 8 mix we used with the microfiber mesh, the water reducer in it. That's a pretty good finishing mix for a pool deck. We all Same mix we use for stamping too. Got a little bit of wind blowing there today, but it didn't seem to dry out the surface like it does sometimes early in the spring or late in the fall when the mornings are really cool. It was still a little bit humid today, even with the wind. When we pull the broom on some of these curved rounded edges, pool decks, we kind of we kind of feather the broom marks around the curve, the same as the pool on a lot of these. I don't know, it just looks pretty good. Rather than just keeping them straight and pulling it one way, off the long end and then another way off the shorter ends. We just feather them around like that. If you guys do that differently, let me know what you do down in the comments. Or, I mean, how many of you guys actually pour concrete decks around pools like this? I don't see too many of these videos on YouTube like how we do it. You can see Darren right there magging the concrete, how nice that mags out when you get on it just at the right time. Everything fills in really good. Going good. Is what I mean by feathering around that edge. Harvey's kind of pulling that around the edge with a slight curve to it. This this square rectangle piece in the back of the pool, that's they're going to end up building a pool house on top of that. We asked him if he wanted it smooth or if he wanted it broomed, and he just said broom everything. So we'll give that a broom finish, but we're going to turn the broom the other way and do it 90 degrees to the pool deck. And then he'll build his house right on top of it. So here I am fighting the pool pump, trying to get this broom mark <laughs> over here. So the mag floating is really key. We always mag float things first. Um, we don't we don't generally run a Fresno over stuff or a hand trial on exterior concrete like this because our concrete has air entrainment in it. And what air entrainment is, it's basically tiny little microscopic air bubbles that they inject into the concrete when they batch the concrete truck out. And those little microscopic air bubbles, they allow 
water when it rains on the concrete and soaks into the concrete late in the fall or in the winter or early in the spring and then the temperatures go below freezing if there's water down in the concrete those air bubbles allow the water to expand in the concrete without popping the surface of the concrete off so that's kind of what air entrainments for so you got to be kind of careful with air entrainment when you're when you're finishing it if you seal the surface off even when you broom it like this if you seal it off with a fresno or a hand trial you run the risk of trapping some of that air under there right in the surface and sometimes that can create a blister or a bubble and the broom doesn't always take that out we know that from experience that's why we do it the way we do it here if we want a tighter broom finish we'll just we'd give something like this 15 minutes and we go right back over it again with the mag floats and the surface would be even tighter the broom marks would be lighter and we don't have to steel trowel it that way just a little bit different ways people finish in different parts of the country you know i think in the midwest and down south where they don't get the freeze thaws that we do everybody's everybody's hand troweling exterior concrete and that's fine you know if it doesn't hurt the concrete through the winter then we'd probably do it too just to get a little bit finer finish sometimes We got about 20 feet right there from the edge of the pool to where I'm standing. That's why we get 18 feet of handle. <clears throat> That's why Darren's kind of helped me set that down, just to set it down really light up along the coping. And then I'm pulling it back far enough so where the pool house is gonna sit on it, we can run a straight line going the other way here in a second. I'll show you how we do that. again slow and steady with the broom we don't like pulling it too fast we don't like stopping and starting just once we get it once we get it set down we like pulling it back until we have to stop and then nice nice and even like that just slow and steady it gives it a nice fine broom finish One more time, huh? there so that's where the pool house is going to sit from there that line to the right and then the boys are gonna mag that out, mag whatever broom box out I got on this side of the line, nice and smooth. And then we'll just run the broom the other way to finish this off. We'll also put a saw cut there when we're done, so we'll saw cut right there, straight across. Kinda of cut that part separate than the pool. And the pool deck also slopes, you can't see it in the concrete, but it slopes. The way we made it was it slopes to the right actually over there where Eric is it slopes to the right and to the left so when it rains the water's not going to run towards the pool house if that makes sense it's going to run off to the right and to the left of this thing and then that pool house area where Darren and Luke are on it with their skids is that's that's relatively flat because that's going to end up having a roof over it and it won't see any outside rain anyway So that's going to be the finish right there nice tight broom finish and then you know the boys they'll hang out here for like I said about three hours they'll probably even strip the outside forms they'll lay this all out they'll snap their chalk lines they'll saw their cuts they'll put cuts off the corners they'll put cuts like I said there for the pool house they'll probably go every six or eight feet you know lineal feet around the pool with cuts so it's going to have a ton of saw cuts in it and generally that that controls any cracking we don't and you know if the subgrades done right we don't typically have any trouble with our pool decks developing cracks outside the joints <laughs> look at that pretty good should we do a diagonal one now to the corners <laughs> he's like you thought i was serious for a second <laughs> Don't you know me by now? Alright, we're gonna pick up and get out of here. That'll do it for that. Just finish edging that up. That's it for today, guys. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.
All right, so this is a sneak look inside the concrete underground where I have multiple trainings, multiple different categories on how I teach you how to pour and finish concrete, how to repair concrete, how to do epoxy coatings. There's just multiple different trainings where I go in depth and teach you how to do all this stuff.